so this unit when it moved into this stack here it has to have the same kind of formation before you stack so when I move up here that was five movement points or actually I think it was six to get into this hex so it will be four up to here five six to first change formation into a two hex line and then seven to move in with the other line of cavalry here so they have to roll for disorder before well I guess we'll put them in that case we'll put them underneath and roll for disorder and they pass because they rapid march in that case that, that's more than six movement points and now they can do the the assault from there so I've marked all of the cavalry units here with close combat markers and uh, we'll do the attacker morale check first so over here uh, they have 38 I think they're not very high morale minus 2 so 36 for the leader 61 they pass they're still charging this stack here is the big one 34 minus 3 for the leader 31 then they roll 32 they will still charge this stack here 80 they pass this stack here 11 they fail so this stack here will not do a charge and they're shaken Okay, so Freebergen's Brigade will of course charge like this. And then we'll have a uh, we have Kompesh Brigade that will charge this redoubt. And the independent unit here will charge one hex forward like that. So they all passed their malice checks. And now we designate individual close combats. So they will attack here. Hompesh Brigade will attack here. And the Rebellion's Brigade will attack these two units here. So now we do defensive fire. Okay, so I realize I made a mistake here. So, this is the French Redoubt. And uh, this infantry unit is inside the Redoubt. Now, Cavalry cannot close combat units inside redoubts in Fontenoy, according to the Fontenoy special rules. So this unit, when it was over here, I'm going to take some steps back here because because of this effect and try to charge this unit instead. So the only difference is that it will have to take another shot of defensive fire from both of these guns in this hex when it leaves this hex uh, otherwise I don't think I will have to change anything so it already passes the attacker morale check and <clears throat> it will be able to do the charge here but um, 
it will be fired upon because it started in this hex so I would have to at least move one hex here uh, so it's a defensive fire with two four pounder guns at two range and that's 90 so that's not looking good for that unit so this gun has uh, 1.5 uh, multiplier because it's firing from a within a redoubt <clears throat> so they are firing out with 15 and these guys are firing out with uh, with 10 so that's uh, 25 so it's 2.2.5 to 1 and uh, and they ha are firing at a very big stack so they will have basically it's the maximum result so it's a uh, Four step loss, disorder check, and morale check. Okay, so they took four strength point losses and have to do uh, disorder. They passed the disorder check, and the, the morale check is was 52, but they have a plus 20 on the morale check because they were uh, because they took uh, four strength point losses this stack. So the unit has. 34 I think in efficiency rating and then the leader gives them minus 3 so 31 plus 20 for the the losses that's 51 oh so they pass actually they pass both their morale and disorder check but they took four strength point losses it's actually more important in these defensive fires to not get disordered or shaken because that's when your combat effectiveness goes down. So this unit will then charge here actually. And this gun has now opportunity to fire it again as well as that one. I don't know, th these um, keeping track of how many times they have fired is actually kind of cumbersome. I don't know if that's a good uh, optional rule there. So in the original game you don't keep track of how many times the, the guns fire. Uh, this is an optional rule that we decided to run with uh, to give it a little bit more realistic feel that they would, can fire as many times as they want. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so now we do this close combat here. Now because because of the redoubt rule this cavalry cannot attack these units so the close combat will be between the cavalry and this unit here. So these guys they can defensive fire and from a redoubt they're in general order so they can fire with three, three strength points to an adjacent hex so they will fire of course their eight pounders and two of the infantry strength points and add that to this uh, unit's yeah. defensive fire. So this unit passed its um, pretty close combat morale check, defender morale check. It had a plus five modifier because it's charged by cavalry, but it passed. So now we go to defender uh, defensive fire. They can fire here to four strength points times three, uh, 12. So they fire with 12 strength points, and these guys can fire with a gun and two strength points of infantry. The gun gives eight, one times eight for the range, and two infantry, that's two times uh, three for the range, so six. So in total, 12, eight, six, 26 strength points into this hex here. So this cavalry stack is uh, 13 strength points big, divided in two hexes, so it's six here and seven here. Uh, seven, um, Target size, it's times two for cavalry, so it's up to 14. That gives actually uh, plus 15 on the defensive fire. And also, they will have the normal uh, defensive fire bonus, so plus 25 in total on the 2.5 to 1. It's uh, 80, so it's up to 105, so it's four step losses, uh, disorder check, and morale check. So I'll take the step losses later, disorder, 
they pass 74 that's 20 and then morale and that's a special result and if the unit stacked with the leader we roll with a minus 15 so that's actually good for these ones otherwise they would have a plus 20 so now they're down to 23 so they might actually pass the morale check and they do they also pass the morale check so they took four strength point losses okay so the close combats are finished Vibergen's brigade routed lost a lot uh, Humpesh brigade over here routed away cost one strength point loss on the French unit and the disorder and uh, but the only one who actually succeeded with the charge was the horse grenadier guards uh, over here and uh, the the routed unit is over here and passed through and caused a shaken disorder in one of the cavalry units here in the middle and I actually opted to try to recall directly here so I didn't do any pursuit and succeeded with a recall so I thought it was best to stay here to be in the flank of these guys and not go too far in but I think this is the first unit to actually breach the French perimeter here. Okay, so we reached the end of turn on the 11 o'clock turn. And what has happened since? Uh, so basically I got a French activation and the end of turn went up to 8 and then I activated uh, Shaban's wing which was basically that's the sea wing which has all the these units here in the forest but also in these redoubts and over uh, even some units over here so what I did was basically in that activation I just backed up these units one hex and they managed to stay ordered all of them and then uh, I got an allied activation actually with no end turn marker movement and I was hesitating quite a bit here because I had Campbell's Cabaret Wing, which I finally activated and actually I turned them, they were sort of facing this way and I turned them and they are now running out of the forest this way. They got lots of disorder here, but they have tons of leaders as well, so they will be fine next turn. But on the other hand, I was really hesitating because I have this guard unit here. Uh, and he had a good opportunity to attack this shaken French infantry here. But uh, in the end I decided maybe it's more important to try to bring out the cavalry here. And I actually moved up Cumberland to put him on top here. So next time I get a wing activation with all the infantry I can also attach this guard unit. Because I have Cumberland on top there. And then we got another French activation. And, and what I did then was that. I moved up Pons Cavalry Brigade here, they were standing somewhere around here and uh, they have actually taken some losses from before earlier so they're not super strong but they are all in good shape and uh, I moved up here and created a line here so now they can potentially opportunity to charge uh, these English units here and then I got a special result uh, for the French which was very annoying because it was command lethargy and the Dutch player of course chose to activate this guy with half his movement points and since they were already blocked by this command which has already activated they couldn't really move uh, so now normally at the end of turn you can actually move all the the troops that have that have not been moved uh, uh, no, the, all the all the troops on in roll column then can actually do a limited activation so basically just move without rapid march uh, but now I think this one is actually uh, I think yeah this one is not activated so I can move this one but all the other ones will be blocked by this um, half moment point activation so I will just move up 
I think I will move these these troops from Tournay. I will move them along the road here and then turn down here towards the action here and then we can start the 1120 turn.